let's talk about the tangent line problem. So we're doing a little bit of calculus here, an introduction to calculus. So here's a coordinate, a coordinate plane, and here's the graph of a line in the coordinate plane. Okay, and you know that the steepness of the line is the same at every point. Right? If we view this as the side of a hill, right, and I'm and we read graphs from left to right in that. So if this is the side of a hill, right, the steepness of the hill is the same everywhere. Okay? And you only need two points on the line, right, to calculate the slope, the steepness of the line, right? It's rise over run. Okay. Well, the problem that we're interested in calculus, for those of you who have to take it, right, this is a big problem. Um, that we're concerned with in calculus is here I have the graph of a curve, okay? Might be a parabola or something else. And again, this is um, a hill, right? And you can see that the steepness along the curve, okay, changes at every value of x. When I'm down here on the, right, walking, um, walking the hill, okay? I'm walking uphill, and the hill is steep. And so the slope is large and positive. And then I get to the top of the hill, okay, and it's flat at the top of the hill, right? The slope is zero. I'm not going uphill, I'm not going downhill. And then as I proceed, when I get over here, right, I'm going downhill, and the slope is uh, negative, and it's large. Okay, so the slope or the steepness of the curve changes as we move along the curve. And so one problem we're interested in calculus is, how do I calculate the slope or the steepness of the curve at each point on the curve, right, for each value of x? And that's what this section is all about, okay? And so <laughs> at the top of uh, page one of your handout, says one of the basic definitions in calculus employs the ratio, right, or the quotient. Ratio is another word for quotient, right, for fraction. Employs the ratio f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And this ratio is called the difference quotient. So to calculate the steepness of the curve for each value of x, the first thing we have to calculate is what is called the difference quotient for a function f of x. And so in the exercise, we're going to find and simplify the difference quotient for the function f of x equals 4x squared minus 2x. Now, if you took college algebra, you probably got some exposure to this in college algebra. So our function f of x is equal to 4x squared minus 2x. So we're going to do this one step at a time. So we calculated the difference quotient. The first thing we're going to do is calculate uh, f of x plus h, right? This f of x plus h. And so you find f of x plus h. Right? You replace x on the right hand side, we're seeing x on the right hand side with x plus h. So we have 4 times x plus h squared minus 2 times x plus h. Now, this is x plus h squared is a perfect square, right? And it boils into a perfect trinomial. Now we've done this before. You should start to get good at this. But x plus h squared, right, is x plus h times 
times x plus h. And when we FOIL, we have x times x is x squared. And when we do the outer, we have uh, h times x. When we do the inner, we have h times x. And when we do the last, we have h squared. And so this simplifies to x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. And so if, when you do this, uh, when you square a binomial a thousand times, you get really good at it. You know this is going to be x squared plus <laughs> 2 times hx plus h squared. Okay. And it's this binomial expansion is on that, back in section 1.5 we had the formulas. And so we had the binomial expansion a plus b squared. And a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2 times a times b plus b squared, right? So those of you guys take calculus, right? These formulas should uh, become second nature to you. All right. So x plus h squared is equal to 4. Or, so 4 times x plus h squared is equal to 4 times x squared plus 2hx plus h squared, right, all in parentheses. And then we have to distribute the minus 2 here. Or actually, we'll can just carry it along for now if you want. And now when it's simplifying f of x plus h, we distribute the 4 inside the parentheses here and the minus 2 inside parentheses there. So we have 4x squared plus 2hx, oops, that's wrong, 4x squared plus 8hx plus 4h squared, All right, that's what I get when I distribute the 4, and then when I distribute the minus 2 over here, I have minus 2x minus 2h. So that's what f evaluated at x plus h equals. So that's this part of the difference quotient. Now we've got to subtract from f of x plus h the function f of x. So we have f of x plus h minus f of x. Well, f of x plus h is 4x squared plus 8hx plus 4h squared minus 2x minus 2h. And then we got to subtract from that. All right, so this is all f of x plus h. we got to subtract from that f of x. And f of x is this binomial. It's got two terms, so you got to put it in parentheses, so you won't distribute the minus sign correctly. And there were a fair number of students on exam two, on the last page where you're combining functions, and they had to subtract one function from another, do f of x minus g of x. They didn't put g of x in parentheses, and they didn't get the right answer. So remember, this minus sign out here is like minus 1. So when I distribute the minus 1 inside parentheses, right? minus 1 times 4 is minus 4, so minus 4x squared 
And then minus 1 times minus 2x is plus 2x. Now if you do this correctly, okay, because this is uh, a quadratic, these two terms inside the parentheses, after you strip the minus sign, will offset two terms in f of x plus h. So when we combine like terms, we have 4x squared minus 4x squared, and we have minus 2x plus 2x, right? So both are equal to 0. And now we have 8hx plus 4h squared minus 2h. Right, that's what f of x plus h <coughs> minus f of x simplifies to, right? 8hx plus 4h squared minus 2h. And now to finish getting the difference quotient, we divide that by h. Okay? And then we have the difference quotient for this function. Notice that in the numerator here, okay, numerator consists of three terms and they all have h in them. So let's factor out an h in the numerator. We have h times 8x plus 4h minus 2 divided by h. And now, as long as h doesn't equal 0, the h is canceled. And the difference quotient simplifies to f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h is equal to what's in parentheses here, 8x plus 4h minus 2. Uh, it would be. I think it's on I's on the minus side. Though. Thank you very much. 8x plus 4h minus 2. All right. So that's the difference quotient. Now you know that the graph of f of x is a what? What's the graph of f of x? Parabola. Is it open up or open down? Yeah. Open up, right? So we need the difference quotient. So if here's our parabola. I'm not going to draw the coordinate plane, right? But it opens up. So we need the difference quotient so we can calculate the steepness or the slope of the parabola, right? For each value of x. So down at the bottom of the page, now we're going to find what is called the derivative of a function f of x. And the derivative function f of x is the function 
F prime of X. You see there's a prime in the superscript of the letter F. So this is F of X. This is F prime of X. And the derivative of the function F of X is the function F prime of X defined by the limit. Remember we studied limits back in 1.5? Okay. The limit as H goes to zero of the difference quotient. It's not X going to zero, it's H going to zero. Okay. And so when you evaluate that limit, then you get the derivative for the function f of x, and that derivative tells you the steepness of the curve at each value of x. So we're going to calculate the derivative for the function f of x equals 4x squared minus 2x, right, from up here, which we calculated the difference quotient for already. So the derivative for this function f of x, f prime of x, is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of its difference quotient and what's its difference quotient equal to? 8x plus 4h minus 2. We calculated it already. So this is equal to the limit as h goes to zero. So this difference quotient for this function is this right down here, right? So we replace the difference quotient up here with 8x plus 4h minus 2. Now, do you know, remember what the first step is in evaluating a limit? A direct substitution. Um, set h to yeah, put 0 in for h, right? So when you do that, you have 8x plus 4 times 0 minus 2 which is equal to 8x minus 2. So f prime of x for our quadratic function, right, for our parabola, is equal to 8x minus 2. So you want to know what the steepness of the parabola is, or the slope of the parabola is, for each value of x? You evaluate it, right, at the value of x you're interested in. Okay. So at x equals 0, the slope of the curve is f prime of 0, which is equal to 8 times 0 minus 2, which is equal to minus 2. So at x equals 0, in the graph of the parabola, the steepness of the curve is my the slope is minus two, right? It's going down here. At <laughs> x equals three, f prime of three is equal to eight eight times three minus two, which is equal to twenty two on order of operation. So at x equals 3 in the graph of our parabola, so it's on the right hand side here somewhere, right? x equals 3. The slope is equal to 22. So in order to calculate the steepness of a curve at each value of x, you got to calculate the difference quotient and then we got to calculate the derivative, okay, which is the limit. Any questions on that, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. All right, so let's flip over. 
to the back page. Do one that's a little bit more interesting. Compute the derivative of the function f of x equals x cubed minus x. All right. So, to calculate the derivative of this function, we need the difference quotient first, right? So, I'm going to do, um, to make life easier, faster, I'm going to do the entire numerator. Okay? f of x plus h minus f of x. And then divide the result by h. Okay? So, we have f of x plus h minus f of x. What's f of x plus h? Wherever you see an x, you replace it with x plus h, right? So we have x plus h cubed minus x plus h in parentheses, right? There, uh, it's x, uh, yeah, x plus h cubed minus x plus h. Remember, there are two terms in x plus h, so we got to put it in parentheses. Okay? Whenever we put a negative, whenever we subtract. So f of x plus h is x plus h cubed minus x plus h in parentheses. Okay? We got to subtract from that f of x. Well, what's f of x? It's this binomial, two terms, right? x cubed minus x. There are two terms in our function f of x, so we got to put x cubed minus x in parentheses. So that's what f of x plus h minus f of x looks like. Now, we got to cube x plus h, right? You got a binomial expansion, right? With the exponent equal to 3. So back in section 1.5, remember we had a plus b cubed? Do you remember what a plus b cubed is equal to when you expand it? It's a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3a b squared plus b cubed. Right, this is from section 1.5. So when I do x plus h cubed, Right? I replace A with X and B with H on the right hand side, right? So when I do that, I have X cubed plus 3H X squared plus 3H squared X plus h cubed. Now I switch the h and the x squared and the h squared and the x okay, from the formula. I have a tendency to put the x last. And then when I distribute the minus sign, inside parentheses here I have minus x minus h. 
And then when I distribute the minus sign inside parentheses here, I have minus x cubed plus x. And so again, if you've done the math correctly, right, when you distribute the minus sign, these two terms will cancel two terms from f of x plus h. And so you notice we've got x cubed minus x cubed, and we have minus x plus x. And so we're left with 3hx squared plus 3h squared x. plus h cubed minus h and that's what the numerator equals so we have f of x plus h minus f of x is equal to that. And now to finish getting the difference quotient, we got to divide both sides by h. Okay. So we divide the left hand side by h. And we divide the right hand side by H. Well, you'll notice, right, the numerator has four terms in it, and they all have variable h in it. So we can factor out an h in the numerator. So when we factor out an h from each of those four terms, we have left in parentheses 3x squared plus 3hx plus h squared minus 1, all divided by h. And now as long as h doesn't equal 0, the h in the numerator and the h in the denominator cancel, and our difference quotient is what's in parentheses. f of x plus h minus f of x over h is equal to 3x squared plus 3hx plus h squared minus 1. So that's the toughest part of finding the derivative. Okay. It's doing the difference quotient. questions thus far? Alright, and so now the derivative f prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0. Of the difference quotient, well, our difference quotient is equal to this on the right hand side. So this is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of 3x squared plus 3hx plus 
8 squared minus 1. Then now I plug in 0 in for h inside the parentheses, and I'm left with 3x squared plus 3 times 0 times x plus 0 squared minus 1. So this is equal to 3 times 0 times x, right, is equal to 0. And 0 squared is equal to 0. And so I'm just left with 3x squared minus 1. So f prime of x gives me the steepness, or the slope of this curve, at each value of x. So if I want to know what the steepness of this curve is at x equals 5, I just put in 5 for x on the right-hand side down here. And it tells me what the slope or the steepness of the curve is at x equals 5. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Any questions on that? So I'll get uh, plan to get this homework released um, this afternoon. And um, so it'll be due Wednesday. Okay. So those of you who came in late, uh, you can pick up your stand before you exit.